Hello everyone, welcome to this student lecture of um, ECE 438. My name is Ben Capano and I will be talking about a rep and a comb and finding the Fourier transform of each. So I'll start off with some definitions. Um, if you're not familiar with it, a rep of a signal, uh, I think of that as being the periodic repetition of the signal in the time domain. So you're basically taking whatever signal you have and literally copying it, putting it every, um, every, um, every period for uh, an infinite amount of time. So it's just making copies of this signal. So if we're taking a rep of something, um, so the periodic repetition of a signal in the time domain. So say your signal looks something like this, right? So you just have some random signal. Um, so taking the rep of that would yield just that same signal, right? Copied every t, and then this this length right there, t, is going to be your period, um, and that's you know that's in the positive and negative directions. So this is negative t. Um, this goes on and on indefinitely, or infinitely. Um, so that's what that's what a rep would be. And then if we're talking about the comb, I think of a comb as being um, the periodic sampling of a signal in the time domain. So this is a little bit harder to grasp, but if if you have the same signal, right? So a comb is going to be, just pretend like you're taking a comb and just, just combing out parts of it. So the parts um, that are going to be left over when you comb the signal, um, they're going to be impulses um, that, are, that occur whenever, at whenever your sampling frequency is. But um, their area is, so it's just going to be an impulse, right? Infinitely um, high every however often. And, uh, an impulse is supposed to be, it's supposed to have infinite height and infinitesimally small width, right? But the area um, in each of these impulses is going to be determined by uh, whatever the value of the function was at the point of the sampling. So that's a little bit harder to grasp, but that's what I think of being um, a cone. And if we're representing these uh, mathematically, a rep is going to look like... Um, it's not a clear place to put that. So a rep is going to be, um, so you're taking the signal in the time domain and convolving it with an impulse train, whereas a comb is going to be that same signal in the time domain multiplied by an impulse train. So that is just a rep, your signal x of t, involved with um, an impulse train, which would yield, repeating the signal every t, um, length, I guess. And then for comb, it's going to be the same signal multiplied by this impulse train. Um, so you're just getting a sampling of it. So those are the starting definitions of what a rep and a comb are, um, at least as I would explain them. And now I'll go ahead and move into how to find the Fourier transform of each. So uh, I'll go ahead and start with finding the Fourier transform of a rep, um, because we'll, we'll have to take a quick detour and find the Fourier transform of an impulse train. So Fourier transform of a rep of some signal x of t is going to be equal to finding the Fourier transform of um, what a rep is, which I explained to be this convolution of uh, a signal with the impulse train in the time domain. Um, so, we know that when you convolve two things in the time domain, in the frequency domain, they're going to be multiplied together. So, saying this right there is going to be the same as saying the Fourier transform of your signal times the Fourier transform of this impulse train. So what we're going to do now is find the Fourier transform of the impulse train because we're going to need that for this one as well as when we're finding the Fourier transform of a cone. So, right, Fourier transform of an impulse train. Um, so we'll start with what, what is an impulse train. This is going to be the same as finding the Fourier transform of our definition for an impulse train, which we know to be... Um, summation from negative infinity to infinity of, um, of this, this 
delta of t you know, repeated every whatever your period is, which is the same as the summation from negative infinity to infinity of 1 over whatever your period is, um, times a complex exponential e to the j, 2 pi over um, period n times t. Taking the constants out of this, um, this is the same as summation uh, n infinity to infinity over t. Um, since this is all going to be a constant term, now we're finding what's left over is the complex exponential that we have to find the Fourier transform of. So um, from our table of Fourier transforms, we know that the transform of an exponential that looks like this is going to yield um, it's going to yield a, uh, an impulse. Frequency of man. Which is the same as um, getting a summation term out of here, 1 over t uh, times a new impulse train, because that's what that is, a frequency 1 over t. Hear that? This is this term right here is the Fourier transform of an impulse train P of T. So now we'll put that back into our original equation on how to find Fourier transform of a rep. And I'll do that real quick. Find that uh, Fourier transform of an impulse train equals the new impulse train in the frequency domain. So we can say that um, coming back over here, uh, our Fourier transform of a rep is going to be the Fourier transform of a signal, x of f, um, times a Fourier transform of the impulse train, which is 1 over t, uh, new impulse train. And we know from my definition that this is the definition of a rep uh, because it's the signal. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's a cone. Sorry, it's the definition of a cone because this is, this is the signal multiplied with an impulse train. So from this, we can show that the Fourier transform of a rep is in fact a cone. So now I will um, find the Fourier transform of a cone, which you will not be surprised to find that it is a rep. Okay. Um, all right. So now we're going to find the Fourier transform of a cone. Which is the Fourier transform of what we originally multiplied in the time domain. You remember, there's a signal multiplied with this impulse string. Mm -hmm. So in the frequency domain, it's going to be the Fourier transform of our signal involved with the Fourier transform of our impulse string. which we already found down there. So now, we can see that the Fourier transform of comb is going to be your big X of F of the signal involved with what we found to be um, the Fourier transform of an impulse train over T, uh, this new train in the frequency domain, which is a signal involved with an impulse train, um, which we know to be a rep. 
So this is, again, showing that the Fourier transform of a comb is a rep. And the Fourier transform of a rep is a comb. Um, so yeah, uh, that is all I have. I hope this has been informative and you've learned something. Thank you for watching, and that's all.